Struggling trying to figure out how to wet vent your bathroom group? Stay tuned because I'm going to show you exactly how that's done. Hey, my name's Clayton. And I'm Karsten. And we are the plumbing gurus on this channel striving to save you money and keep you informed on all the proper plumbing practices. That's right. Let's dive into this. Let's get this done. All right. So the first thing with wet venting is the best, the best way that I like to explain it to people is you're going to want to take your, your main three inch run, run it straight to your toilet. And then the first Y that comes off within, like once you're draining down your toilet here, this first Y, no matter what, if you put it here, here, whatever, the first Y that comes off is going to be your vent for the toilet. Now the minimum vent size for a toilet is inch and a half where we're from, but we're wet, wet venting right now, so think some other fixtures. That's right. Now Carson, for this distance here, there is a uh, minimum distance for the horizontal and also the vertical part of the toilet. Is that correct? That is right. Okay. The minimum distance would be vertically one meter and then horizontally three meters. Mm -hmm. So with that, that means that you have to have a Y taken off within one meter vertically and three meter meters horizontally for it to vent properly. That's correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then from here, what we have is we have a two inch that's wide. Now this is kind of looks like a T, but this is actually a Y that's coming off of the three inch here. You never want to use a T on the horizontal on its flat on its side. So this is a Y here. So you can see so this, this, this is a T here. No bueno. This is a Y where it comes off of here. That would be a branch coming off the two inch. Now we'd run this two inch up over and it also Y's off of here for the bathtub and it runs up two 45s up into the wall and then a TY here runs over for the trap arm for the lab sink or for a basin to whatever you have and then you have your vent on top here. So the reason he said TY here and Y here is because you can you can use TY's in 90s going from horizontal to vertical. I know it depends on where you're from, it might be different. I know some people can actually use TYs on the horizontal, they can use 90s anywhere. Our code where we're from, Calgary, Alberta, these are just our codes, they might be different. So if you are doing plumbing and you're gonna be getting it inspected, you're gonna to wanna to call a city inspector or something like that to find out what the codes are before you go ahead and do it. And I know where we're from, we can call 311, call our city inspectors. If you ask them any questions, they'll tell you the answers right away. They're yeah. happy to help. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna be talking about here is where the wet vent is gonna start, where it begins and ends. So this is your vent. This is your inch and a half vent. And one thing actually we're just gonna quickly say we didn't talk about is a minimum vent size. We did say it, but minimum vent size for a toilet is inch and a half. I know in some cases, some people say you can use an inch and a quarter. It does depend on what, what how many fixtures are going into there. But in this case, we're gonna have an inch and a half vent coming off for this three piece bathroom. So then our, our wet vent begins at the this section right here, where this trap arm drains into here and then this is our vent. This point here to this point here is gonna be our wet vent. And there is no maximum, um, there's no limit to how long that can be. It can be, or minimum or anything, there's no maximum minimum, it can be 100 feet. It just, everything else has to meet the codes, draining in and size, size wise. That's correct, yeah. So another thing with the wet vent or any any drains, when you come kind of horizontally to ver vertical and penetrate through a wall or anytime you kind of change direction like that, going from horizontal to vertical, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna put a clean out there so that you can open it up and send your drain auger down there ever this section gets filled up and clogged up and you're getting backups through your drains, you're gonna wanna clean it out through there. A lot of cases that's gonna be closed up behind drywall so you're probably not gonna access that and usually you're gonna just probably clean through your, your shower here. And then also a toilet is can act as a clean out too. That's right. Clean this three inch drain. Yeah, that's right. And that is a, a lot of large portion of the reason why this here can't be a 90. It has to be two 45s. Um, and it's nice to have a longer sweep 45 if you can, because it's easier for everything to flow through the drain. And also if you ever have to use a snake through this clean out, it's easier to get that snake through a longer sweep 245 offset than it is if you just put 245s right next to each other almost acting like 90. So from going from vertical to horizontal on a drain, you cannot have a 90 here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this has to be uh, 245s. This here has to be a Y. This here has to be a 45. 
this cannot be a 90, okay? You could have two, you could have a hub 45 and a fitting 45 glued together to run this way back into your toilet or whichever way you're running. You cannot run a 90, okay? And not um, only for drain cleaning purposes, it's so that it drains, drains better. properly. Yeah. It drains properly. If you have yeah. like a short sweep 90, there's more of a chance of it, it clogging up and getting stuck in the 90. Mm -hmm. So if you have like, if you glue two 45s and ideally you have a chunk of pipe in there and do like a nice long sweep 90. Yeah. I know that some places, depending on where you are in the world, you can just buy a long sweep 90 and use long sweep 90s, but we're not allowed to do that. All right, so we're gonna move on to the trap arm. So this, what, what a trap arm is, is it is the arm from the trap, which is right here, and it runs right to the vent, which is right here. This right here is called the trap arm, okay? This right here, this distance from here to here is called the trap arm. This here, I'm sure you guys already know, is the P-trap. I'm just kind of explaining it to you so you fully understand. So this here is, we're gonna run this trap arm in inch and a half. People do run this an inch and a quarter, um, but I always find as soon as that drain starts clogging up and it starts to penny, we like to call it, it you gotta get it cleaned and it's always a problem. So if you run it an inch and a half, you'll avoid that problem. It's just, it might, it might cost you a little bit more in material, but it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headache down the road. It'll take a lot less, like a lot longer for it to fill up. A lot longer, yeah. And it also drains faster and neater, cleaner, and everything. So, just to cover the basics on this, this trap arm here, you wanna run your plumbing at a minimum of quarter inch per foot of grade, okay? So, the trap arm cannot be longer, if it's an inch and a half pipe, cannot be longer than six feet. Okay, if this here, this distance from here to here is seven feet long, you'll have to run a vent from here and tie it into here to prevent this from uh, blocking itself. Okay, so the maximum is six feet on an inch and a half on an inch and a half trap arm. Very very important. Okay, don't go any more. So this here. So what, where are they where do they come up with that number? The one, one pipe size it's one diameter. pipe size diameter yeah. yep so one, exactly a quarter inch per foot you can only drop an inch and a half so if you do the math it's six feet six feet yeah. that's correct yeah so every uh, every trap arm is just one pipe size diameter that's right to drop. that's right thanks person yep and then so this that rule will now come into play onto where this wet vent here where you run this okay and the reason for that is because if this bathtub, if this drain here is now way over here and it's eight feet from here to here, that's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. You could do that if you ran it in two inch, but let's say you just had inch and a half. We're just gonna stick the inch and a half. So if you had inch and a half, the furthest you could run this is six feet. So if you're going further than six feet, you would wanna run this drain closer to where that trap arm needs to be or that P-trap, sorry, needs to be and then you'd come back and go up into your wall. So you just wanna make sure, that kind of dictates really on where this wet vent is, right? And, it, and they can tie anywhere into here. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You could tie this in here, 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 it doesn't matter. Like you right. said, that distance, that six foot distance is the most, that's the crucial point. Mm -hmm. So you just wanna make sure that you, when you're planning your plumbing out, to, to think about these things ahead of time, not just start putting putting Ys on and cutting, then you're like, oh, my, my pipe's too far. So it's very, right. very important to think about those numbers when you're, when you're in the planning stage of running your piping. Yep. One quick thing that I actually didn't mention here was, we did say you go straight to the toilet with the wet vent, but the, the toilet needs to be the last fixture on the wet vent, and that's why, so a lot of people get confused by that. Mm -hmm. um, this is why I say just run straight to the toilet and take the Y off, because that is guaranteed to be your last fixture. There's nothing else tying into here. If you were to tie a toilet into here, you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't be able to do that. So you'd have to, you know, do it tight into here and separately vent it its own way. So there's lots of different rules to wet venting, but this is just kind of the very most basic and standard way to understand it. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. I uh, appreciate it. I know this is a little bit of advanced stuff here if you guys are new to plumbing. So if you have any questions or anything, you can definitely leave a comment below. You can also check out our Facebook group, The Plumbing Gurus on Facebook. Um, throw an invite on there. We will definitely accept. Uh, you can send pictures, you can add yeah, comments, at all, you yeah. can start conversations. If you have any questions about any work that you're doing or the work that you're gonna do, or if somebody's done work and you're not sure if it's right, 
Uh, you can post uh, that on our Facebook group as well. Uh, anyways, uh, we hope you guys got some value out of this one. And thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. See you on the next one.